Well, 25 years ago, he was a rookie linebacker turned tight end who helped the Detroit Lions win an NFC Central title. Sadly, still their last division title. He played seven seasons with the Lions, Bears, and Jaguars. Hard to believe he's been here for 18 seasons with us, says our NFL Lions analyst here on Sports Overtime. Pleasure to have my longtime friend and uh, a very slim down Ty Hall. How much weight have you lost, brother? You look great. Just, just enough to be dangerous. Just, you know, just, keep, keep it, you know. Just, just to get healthy? Well, you know, I mean, when you have kids and you got to have a wife, eventually you look in the mirror and say to yourself, ah, I probably could look a little better, feel a little better. So maybe we could do that with yeah, the Lions. Yeah. We can get them to strip Let's a little weight. That That's philosophy. Yeah. So, what, I mean, you go from a 9-7 and seven season, you bring in a coach because you want to go to the next level. Obviously, they didn't. They went to 6-10. and 10. What was the biggest disappointment out of all this for you? Well, I, I just think that the way the team responded. I mean, when you look at Matt Patricia and what he was brought in to do, along with Bob Quinn, uh, to take a step back from a playoff team, uh, which Jim Caldwell had playing pretty well. They had coaches in place, players doing pretty well. Nothing really changed in terms of the personnel, a few things, but you bring in a new coach, new regime, and you're thinking you're going to tighten those screws down and they're going to get this stuff right and not only get into the playoffs, but make some hay. And early on in this season, look, I was at the home opener, as were you. You, yeah. you, you have fun with it, but pick off the Jets, and then it goes really yeah. fast. And then you were like, well, what exactly do we have? And all year long, the problem was you just didn't know what was going to show up when. Defensively, I think it showed that Matt Patricia has that kind of mindset. Uh, uh, Paul uh, Pasqualani, he, he, he obviously did very well. They're in that 10-11 range in terms of total defense. But the problem is, is when you give up 22 points a game and you can only score 20 points a game, you lose more games than you win. And that's what happened this year. So I think that the Detroit Lions have some talent to build on. There's some anchor stuff there in terms of talent. But they're going to have to prove dramatically in the draft, in free agency, and some of the guys stepping up for a few guys that will probably leave and some new coaching staff that will have players that will ha you know, you're going to do everything you can to get these guys to the next level. But it's got to happen right. fast. That's why you made this, this change uh, a year ago. Well, the, the defense got better. Uh, adding Harrison certainly helped the defense. The offense got worse. Um, your thoughts on the new hire as an offensive coordinator and maybe a big philosophy change for them? Yeah, well, I don't know how, you know, everybody in the National Football League wants to run the ball. So Darrell Bevel's not immune to that. The exciting part about him is, is that his offenses consistently were in that top 10 range. They weren't down in the 23-24 range, which they're in now, the bottom third of the National Football League. That's not where you want to be. So I'm excited to see what he does. He gets a, he gets a, a lot of credit, rightfully so, for making the call in the Super Bowl to throw instead of handing off to, to the, his running back. The reality of it is got to have guts and you have to be a very good coach to get to the Super Bowl and to be consistent as he has. So he has obviously the background. Certainly running the football is going to be a big deal, which leads me to one of the things I think the Lions are going to need next year, which is another running back. When you look yeah. at the Super Bowl teams this year, Every single one of those Super Bowl teams, including the L.A. Rams, if you, when you really look at it and you say to yourself, well, it's girly, 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 look, Anderson's doing his part, too. There's right. two backs. So you can't just have, I think, who we have in one back in Kerryon Johnson. You're going to need a second guy that can do some things out of the backfield. But there's certainly going to be more thought process of running the football, mm -hmm. which I think is a good thing. And it'll just be exciting to see what they do. Again, my only concern there is, is you got an aging quarterback. They're going to have to right. figure that out, too. Yeah, Kerryon Johnson, one of the great pleasant surprises this year, but a guy who has had injuries issues, so they want to keep him healthy. I, don't, I, don't, I know you had Wayne in Detroit. I don't know if you ever had a new coach when you were in uh, Jacksonville or Chicago, but, you know, for the guys in the room, do they believe in him? I mean, what, what's the sense of the feeling you get? And is it easy to say, well, these kind of things happen with a first-year head coach. It takes a while to adjust. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's time to adjust. I mean, you're, you're adjusting to a new program, a new way, a new set of things. And I think there's actually time for Matt Patricia to adjust. I mean, look, he, he I think at times maybe, uh, may, maybe not intends to, but because he's been around Belichick so long yeah. that, that he kind of wants to communicate that way. He wants to communicate to the media. Maybe he communicates to his team. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is he's not Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is a guy who came in and most of his experience is, is a, as a quality assistant, an assistant, and then a coordinator in the National Football League. He doesn't have a ton of college. He has some, but not a ton of college perspective as well. And He's got to kind of figure out, I think, his own deal. I think the hardest thing for an assistant coach or a coordinator when they come in to any situation of becoming a new head coach is understanding that it's more administrative. It's not as much of the hands-on stuff. They want to do it. They all want to call their plays. But there's a lot of other things that go on with it. And communication, really, quite frankly, is the most important thing you do outwardly into the public and the media and, most importantly, inwardly to your team. And I think 
some of the guys are catching on and certainly you hear some of the quotes that are coming through the media through the players that that his message is getting there but at the same token it takes a little bit of time and one season i don't think is enough yeah. to define what that ends up being i think th there's guys in the locker room that believe in him i think they're, they're going to bring in other guys that do but he's he, he doesn't have a full locker room yet because you do hear some yeah. stuff of questions etc once he kind of gets that, then I think that'll be a good yeah. thing. I think it's a great point. He's going to need to do some adjusting as well for his teammates or for his players, etc. Where do they go in the draft? I mean, I know some of it depends on what they do in free agency. What's the biggest need? What do they have to have? Is it just getting an edge rusher? Yeah, well, I, here, here's, the, here's the misnomer, which in terms of the edge rusher, everybody wants one. If you look at the New England Patriots and his background and what he studied personnel-wise, they didn't always go out and get that edge rusher. They did it multiple fronts, multiple ways, multiple yep. athletes. They had some success you, this yeah, year, Yeah, you think yeah. about Kyle Van Noy, who left us and went to New England, right. injured, didn't play a lot, <laughs> and did. Those are the type of players, athletes, an outside linebacker, a defensive end that certainly can get yep. there. But I look for the Detroit Lions to uh, continue to draft on the defensive side, but also get some more playmakers on the offensive side, including another offensive lineman. Because the whole question of Mark, Mark about Lang and what he's doing right. will certainly feed that. I'll have some money in free agency. We'll see what direction they go to set that up. More with Ty Halleck on the Lions in a moment. We'll also get his thoughts on the Super Bowl, 53, who he thinks will win, and maybe should they change the overtime rules in pro football? That and more straight ahead on Sports Overtime. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to Sports Overtime with former Michigan State Spartan and Detroit Lion Ty Halleck. The offense was a big issue this year. There may be a change in direction. I love Matt Stafford as a player. I think he's a great player. Best in my lifetime for sure. Do you still believe in Matt Stafford and why or why not? Well, I ultimately do. I think he's a very talented quarterback. He has a strong arm. I think if protected, most of the time he makes decent decisions. This particular year, and I don't know if it was because of some of the offensive struggles terminology-wise if something changed, which he shouldn't have, but him and Jim Bob just didn't seem like they were on the same page, and he made some simple basic mistakes, late interceptions, got rid of the ball a little bit early at times, and you just don't know where it comes from if it's if it's a, a, a just a, a quick thought process that, that, that went awry, or has he got people in his face a little bit more than normal? Look, this is the best quarterback the Detroit Lions have had in the last 30, 40 years. I don't care what anybody says. He's got a strong arm. He's been a warrior. He's always shown up. He's battled through injuries. He's done all the things that you want him to do, and he's more than capable. The question becomes is do you consistently put guys around him, adding an offensive lineman, getting another running back, having another or try to find another vertical receiver that will allow him to do his thing over the next couple of years? Because, look, the one thing that, that's – for certain, the National Football League, it's not for long. I mean, I don't care if you've been in there for 15 years. It seems like it goes by really fast, and he is getting older, not younger, and they're going to have to address that at some point. But I still feel like they got a couple of good years if they'll address some talent around him. Uh, window is getting smaller for sure. Uh, both teams getting into the Super Bowl this year and issue with uh, some calls with the referees. But overtime was the big question mark. Should they change that and allow both teams to have possession of the ball somehow in overtime? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I, I certainly agree with... A coin flip shouldn't shouldn't dictate it, and it doesn't mean it doesn't because the reality of it is the other team still, by the way, is on defense. They have to stop you. They they have every right to do that, and I think if you go with the where you have the field goal and the field goal, then I understand that. But to me, a touchdown winning it, I still think, and I agree with most. I would have liked to have seen the other team have that opportunity. Right. You kick it off, you you put a time clock on it like anything else. You can even put the full quarter. Mm -hmm. You go down and score a touchdown, the other team gets a chance. If they don't score a touchdown, it's over. If they score a touchdown, then you, you do it again. Right. And each team should have based on those, those scoring things. I think that's a simple thing. It's an easy thing to do. I like that still even better than the college game where you put it at 25. There's now real football involved, not the whole game. Right. A lot of facets that you miss in that. So, yeah, I certainly would like to see a little tweak in it. Yeah. If, I think that would work. Particularly in that game, the way they were moving the ball, you felt like whoever got that was probably going to, you know, even if the Chiefs had won it, that Mahomes would have taken them as well. Uh, we do have what appears to be a compelling Super Bowl. Um, do you like uh, the Patriots to win again, or do you like the Rams this time? You know, I ultimately, it's going to be hard to go against the New England Patriots. I mean, even going into Kansas City the way they did, whether you like the rule or not, they went in and won. Tom Brady, the, I mean, father time has just is, is just not gotten him. He's 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 so successful at delivering the football. They've been able to run the football very well. Bill Belichick coaches his tail off, and I think I think those guys. If you look at the last X amount of years, this may be one of the greatest runs in NFL history, particularly in the free agency franchise. Which you know, when free agency started in '93, when I came in the league, there were a lot of people that felt like it was going to be a rotational success pattern for a lot of folks because the free agency, you you get right. some guys, you lose some guys. Nobody's done it better than the New England Patriots since the early 2000s. 
2000s. And the reality of it is, is Tom Brady has been quintessential on that as a quarterback. He's been unbelievable. And even as a Michigan State guy, I can tell you, that guy is the best quarterback in the National Football League. Everything says that. If they win, they're six out of nine. That would be unbelievable. They've already won five Super Bowls. I mean, come on. This, this is an incredible run, incredible uh, organization. And if you're a Lions fan, the only thing you get real excited about is, is Bob Quinn had a little bit to do with that. Right. Matt Patricia had a little bit to do with that. And if those guys get on the same page, hopefully it translates to us yeah. so that our Lions can get into the Super Bowls. What the hope so. is. You should have seen us on We can wish. We can night. wish. Been going with him for years and... Looking at that first play, the Diggs pick, it was like, there's an omen of good things to come, and then just went downhill. Well, there's always next year. There always is. Thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. You bet.